Hi, today is February 24th, 2023. Here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 326 for the year, Chuck Berry and I. Chuck Berry and I have something in common. We both had songs about cocks that got to number one on a radio chart. Of course, my song only got to number one on a college radio chart. His song got to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. My song only got to number 25 on the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart. His song was a cover, but he wrote a lot of great songs that were ripped off and or parodied by the Beach Boys and the Beatles and others. My song was an original, and it was ripped off by Wanda Sykes and other comedians. I'm not fronting. Chuck Berry kicks my ass in most, if not all, categories. But if one uses radio charts as a metric, the most successful song that Chuck Berry had, and that I had, had something in common. They were both about cocks. Poem number 327, Fireplace. I cannot say that it is so cold because there is no fire and because you are not here. The once fully functional fireplace is now merely decorative, and maybe when you were here there was a chill that I could not feel. I cannot say that it is cold here because it isn't cold at all. They keep it so hot here, perhaps to make up for the useless fireplace. I will open the window, even though doing so will remind me of how close to me you are and how far away you are. And I will sit back down and stare at the deep, dark, empty fireplace as the room gets colder and colder. Poem number 328, Crime. The character wanted to be cared about. I don't have to be real in order to exist, they said. I have a rich backstory full of pathos and bathos and meaningless tragedy. I have sacrificed everything for love, and I have lost everything. And then they went on to say, And even though I am made up and not real, you should not care about me simply because I am not a well-developed character. For example, they said, What if I told you a bit more about the sad and tragic life that I have lived? What if I told you about the guinea pig? No, I won't. I can't do that. That story is too sad. But if I told you the story about the guinea pig, I bet the tears would well up in your eyes. The fact that I am just made up by some guy and the fact that he made me up not to make you care about me or the guinea pig that he also made up, but rather to make some silly bullshit point about the implications of caring about a fictional character and the fact that that guy who made me up was too lazy or untalented to provide enough details about me to make you actually feel something is not a reason not to actually feel something, to actually feel something, to actually feel something, they said. And then they gave up. And then the guy who made them up left the scene of the alleged literary crime without a trace. Poem number 329, Priapism, it's a song. He had a heart on that just wouldn't quit. No matter what he would do to it, he could pound a stick with nails or beat it with a stick. But he had a heart on that just wouldn't quit. One day he woke up in the middle of the night and his dick was so hard he trembled with fright. He went to a bar and he got into a fight, but it didn't make a difference, it didn't make it right. Cause he had a hard arm that just wouldn't quit. No matter what he tried to do to it, he could set the thing on fire or chop it into bits. But he had a hard arm that just wouldn't quit. And the last one today is called Delicacies of Molten Horror Synapse. Poem number 330, Delicacies of Molten Horror Synapse. I let you in because I could not keep you out. You could have pressed your way through my eyelids if I had had them closed. You could have slid along the synapses and made my brain a molten horror, a delicacy set upon a plate and served to swine as you swirl and swerve and shift and show your colors. I could see you and be you and be with you with my eyes closed, but what I can't do is close them. Thanks and uh, yeah, and thanks and thanks and thanks. 
I really, truly appreciate it.